As a marketing consultant, I have worked with over 400 companies and service providers, public adjusters, you name it. I've, I've worked in over 35 different industries now at this point. And I've come to know several traits where companies and service providers get the best clients, the ones that don't negotiate rates, the ones that will, um, that are pretty hands off, that don't nitpick with everything or, or call you a thousand times a day. So what I've done here is I've outlined some of those traits and you can just see if, you know, maybe you don't have those traits, you need to develop some traits, or maybe you have those traits, uh, some of these traits that I mentioned, and you can amplify them or, or bring them more to the forefront. So let's go through some of them. First trait I've noticed is um, be very attentive and responsive in order to get the, the great clients that you want. Um, your A clients, the ones that, um, that you serve the best, that you can do the best value for, you're usually very attentive and responsive to them. Uh, you don't put them on the back burner. You don't go on vacation and tell them um, and, and not tell them. Uh, but this also means there's a fine line here. You're not being a slave to them. Uh, you're not getting back to them immediately but you don't go a full business day without responding to them. Or if you can't provide them what they need, at least tell them that you're working on it. You know, if it's more than just a quick reply, um, then you might just want to give them a quick reply to say, Hey, I've got your email. I'm working on it. Or I got your voicemail. I'll get back to you soon on this. Uh, but at the very least you're being attentive and responsive to them. The second trait is to have a great reputation. I can't think of a company that I've, I've worked with that has scaled to the point where they're happy with their income and um, you know the flexibility of their work schedule, all those great things that go into being in, into business with yourself without having a great reputation. It just doesn't happen. They go hand in hand. You wanna make sure that every satisfied client you have, they post a public review about you online and you can spoon feed it to them, say, hey, here's a link, please post this to Google or, or Yelp or wherever you're trying to get, um, wherever you're trying to get reviews on. So make sure you have a great reputation. And then you want to show your expertise. A lot of times companies, they just assume and, and public adjusters, service providers, they just assume that the people that they're talking to know about them and their expertise. Uh, I did not know that my public adjuster that he had over 20 years of public adjusting expertise. I just thought I knew he was good, but 20 years is significant. So you want to make sure that you're exuding everything. Um, all your expertise to your client. Don't just assume that they know. Okay. And respect your rates. I've unfortunately been in a conversation a few times when public adjusters start negotiating against themselves before the clients even ask, well, we do 4%, but you know, for you, or, you know, they say it in some way that doesn't sound so cheesy, like for you, like a car salesman would, but um, for you, we'll do 2%. I like the look of your face, you know, um, but, you know, respect your rates, hold still. Um, even if someone questions your rates, ah, you know, 6% is a lot or 4% is a lot. And you say, well, think about it from this perspective. We're doing this, this, and this for you. And we're preparing, we're navigating all this, this language from your insurance company, preparing all these documents. When you show your expertise and you respect your rates, your clients will you'll respect you more for it. Believe me. Stop selling yourself. This is a very common tactic I see public adjusters do when they're on the phone with new potential prospects trying to turn them into clients. They do a lot of selling. It's almost like a hard sell. And what you want to do is show your value. And that is what sells you really. You don't need to be um, saying phrases like a car salesman would uh, to try to get that hard sale. You want to add value to them. And by showing your expertise, you're actually selling yourself without saying those cheesy lines that says, what do I have to do to get you in a contract today? Something like that, right? Uh, I haven't heard that exact phrase from a public adjuster, thank God. But be aware that the, the hard sale is not necessary in your industry. It is showing value and expertise uh, through, um, through your clients and solving their, their problem, their pain point, and you're the solution to the problem. That's the way you sell yourself. Uh, and also have clear communication. If there is a, a way that your client likes to communicate, then be amenable to that. Like if they say, I don't check my email a lot and you mostly communicate with your clients by email, you have to provide a clear way of communication. If somebody is, if one of your clients is a busy executive and he's always on the road and he mostly uses phone, um, then you want to just be sure that you're calling them instead of emailing them, right? So there's a clear path to communication and the method of communication is very important as well. Um, I myself am an email guy. I rarely pick up my phone unless there's a scheduled call. So by trying to call me out of the blue, 
even if I know you, it's not, I'm very rarely going to pick up the call only because I have a set structured way um, that I like to run my day that makes me very efficient. I know that you call and I'll call you back when I can, but I rarely take calls out of the blue. So when you're working with me, you should know that. And when you're working with a client, you should respect how um, they like their communication. Very rarely does a client like Skype and WhatsApp and, and text and phone and email. They usually have one, maybe two favorites. And that's the kind of communication that you should do to them. And make note of that. If you have a, a CRM or some kind of system where you're managing your clients, maybe even a spreadsheet, make note of that. If the rest of your team wants to communicate with this client as well, this client prefers email communication. Okay. Number seven of eight is confidence. You want to make sure that you're uh, professional and confident in everything you do, even the way you state things, your body language, um, the way you're sitting upright, the way you're looking directly at them when you say something, you're not looking to the side. There's a lot of nonverbal communication cues that show that you're not confident with somebody. And that, I think that goes beyond this course to show you all those cues. But if you're interested in knowing what exudes confidence, type into Google um, uh, confidence, nonverbal confidence cues. And you'll get a few things like sitting up straight or standing and facing somebody I mentioned in a previous class, um, uh, the belly button technique, right? When you're, when you're talking to someone, you, your belly button should be facing their belly button. All that exudes confidence. And you want to make sure you pick up on those non-verbal cues because that is what really sells yourself without selling is being confident. And then managing up. There's a whole world out there to know about managing up. Uh, I, I should do a whole class about managing up. Maybe I, maybe I will. Managing up is a way, uh, and I was just dealing with this this morning with a freelancer I hired to do some work. Here's a perfect example. <laughs> this guy I hired, he's doing some website work for me. He's asking me a thousand questions. And every time he emails me, I have to stop what I'm doing and then respond to him. And his last five emails could have been in, he's treating it like a chat, like a live chat line. His last five emails could have been in one email. When you're talking with your client, managing up is all about uh, minimizing communication and keeping it effective. So when you're talking to a client and you know you need three things from them before the end of the day to move forward with whatever you're working on, put those three things in one email succinctly. And if they don't respond to all three of those things, write them an email and tell them or call them. Say, hey, listen, I got two out of the three. I need, I need you to answer this question, whatever the case. But you want to keep emails or any type of communication as succinct and as efficient as possible. And if you want to learn about more about managing up, there's a lot of great YouTube videos and blogs out there about it. And like I said, I might probably do my own class on it, but managing up would really streamline communication and effectiveness and make you more professional. Um, and your clients will love you for it. Believe me, uh, it takes them less time and they know that you're on, uh, on the case doing whatever the, the project entails and you don't need any more information from them. And they know that when they talk to you, that it's going to be very efficient and matter of fact, it's going to be professional and, per and personal but the conversation exists for a reason and that, that you're not going to need them in the next five minutes or the next hour. Okay. So please keep in mind any of these traits that you don't have, uh, please try to develop them. Okay. Best of luck.